So let's first of all look at the main components and how to put the hardware together. The base of the hardware is the docking station. So you'll need that docking station in order to connect a keyboard, mouse and a monitor. They aren't part of the kit, so you'll need to provide them yourself. So use the docking station to connect them. Uh, the docking station, of course, will not work unless the power is turned on. So the square uh, box here is the power supply for the docking station. Uh, you'll use that middle round plug just here to make that work. The PC that uh, plugs into it um, is a peculiar shape, but it's quite a powerful piece of technology. It has a top, um, which is just there, and the bottom of the PC. Now, the bottom of the PC is what will slide into the dock. Um, and when you do that, you'll need to give it a little bit, of, uh, little bit of pressure to make it click in, but you'll hear the click. Now, to know which way around it goes, because it only fits in one way, um, the back of the PC has got these grooves, and of course it's got all that serial number information. That's the back, and where the power plugs into, that is the back. So you'll sit it lightly into the dock and then give it a bit of a click um, to make it sit down. Uh, to take it out when you're packing up and moving, there is an eject button just on the back. So press the eject button down and you can lift the PC out. An important part of the secondary virtual reality kit, of course, is the controllers that come with it. These allow you to manipulate the virtual environment once the user is in. Two controllers, one is left-handed and one is right-handed. It's quite specific the way that they are shaped. But the school will need to provide AA batteries because they are powered by AA batteries. So it's up to the school to provide them. Just to note when you're inserting the batteries is that both the positive end of the battery does face down. Um, so I know other devices, positive and negative, kind of are alternate, but uh, they both face down when you pop them into the handset. So the back just slides off um, and then they go in there. Now the other thing that you'll note that you'll need to do when you do this is there is a tiny little button down here in the controller um, and that button is what you'll use at the very first time when you do the Bluetooth pairing. Um, you can see another video on exactly how that works, but when I refer to the Bluetooth pairing button on the controller, that's where that is, and it's only accessible when you take the back off. One of the other things that you'll find in case number one is this long cable that is going to connect the headset with the PC. Uh, there's about three meters worth of length here, and um, at one end of the cable, it's only got one plug, and the other end, it has two. So the end with the two plugs, there's USB and HDMI, that goes into the top of the PC. Doesn't matter which, H which USB port, so let's plug them in now. The single end of this really long cable connects to the cable and the headset. So on the headset, you will find uh, that there is a plug there with an arrow on it. So the two arrows facing up will connect in together and just a little gentle, gentle nudge and a click and you should see that those two arrows uh, are connected. Once they are connected, then you can just leave that for the duration of having borrowed the kit. Um, I prefer if people didn't unplug them, unplug them in all the time, just because we know that this connection is a little bit fragile, so we're just asking that that connection is made a little bit carefully. Before you start using the virtual reality with the headset, you will need to log into the computer, launch the apps, and do all those sorts of things, and you'll do that either on an external monitor or on a large display. Can I suggest that you do that with like a large data projector so the whole class can actually see what's happening. That display, the large display, will be plugged into the back of the dock and it will either be um, HDMI, of course that's preferred, so if you have a HDMI monitor or display, plug that into the back of the dock. If you don't have HDMI, of course you can use um, the VGA 
um, HDMI converter and of course there's an audio cable as well for you to capture the audio. So plug all that in first, turn the system on and then you can begin to learn how to use the headset. This video is part of a series of support videos all about the kit that you have borrowed. To find the other videos in this series, head to the learning library and visit the kit page for the equipment you've borrowed. You can also find the full list of support videos for all of our kit on the YouTube channel. You can also join us in the Yammer community. If you have any questions or you'd like to ask teachers how they've used the equipment in their classroom, then why not join us on the STEM T4L Facebook community? It's a closed group. You can ask teachers how they've used the equipment and also share the work samples that your students have created.